Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Model Kit Monday, where we return to the world of Gundam Build Fighters Try with Gundam Tryon 3, the Team Build Busters mobile suit. In its high grade 1 to 144th scale, which is really weird saying that considering this thing is actually 1 to 1 scale to the show, high grade Tryon 3. Now, for those that don't know, the Gundam Tryon 3 is a custom made mobile suit based on the Gundam Double Zeta and using the ZZ Gundam as that base you have different kinds of things but instead of using vehicles or other module components like that it uses animals which gives it a very super robot vibe especially in a transformation sequence um, this is actually a kit this is a Gundam but it does split apart into three components which you can see are Riku Tryon, Sora Tryon, and Umi Tryon. Now in the show it was quite a surprise to see something like this appear, especially since throughout the season there had been um, some interesting mixes into the mix, but starting from here a lot of transformations started happening. Gundam the End started getting you know extra components just transforming out of nowhere. The star winning Gundam turned out to have a full size mode instead of just an SD mode. And it was really a turning point in the series into absolute insanity. And speaking of absolute insanity, this is the largest high-grade Bill Fighters kit by far, as it is a massive box. Uh, this is the size of, well, three star winning boxes uh, stacked together. This is about the size of a small master grade, uh, kit-wise, and it's quite awesome. As you can see, it's number 38 in the line. But yeah, it is a massive box, because there is a ton of parts to this guy for all his components. Now naturally, in the series, the three components of Tryon 3 launch separately as per the rules. If they're gonna combine, they you know, if they have a combined mode, they have to be three components if it's over a certain size, which this is. So let's take a look, starting with Riku Tryon. Here we have Riku Tryon, who is Try M1, and he is the first component of Tryon 3. And he is piloted by Minato Sakai, who is basically the pilot of Tryon 3. Honestly, kind of forgot the names of the other two guys on his team, but, you know, that's how it goes. Now, he is a Liger. He is not a Tiger. He is not a Lion. He's a Liger. Uh, it's a mixed breed of the two. And as you can see, he's kind of small. Um, I will say that he's not gigantic. Uh, he is a little tiny guy. It's because he's just the backpack and the chest plate. So, he does have some neat little details, though. But other than that, he is quite tiny. Um, as you can see, stickers do fill in the eyes and the teeth. I do plan on going back and painting those as I think it would look better. Maybe keep the eye stickers, but he definitely lacks a little bit of detail uh, from straight building it. But you can see he's got his tail, he's got everything, he's good to go. On the top here you can see that you have two cannons, and these two cannons do fire. Uh, if you wish, you could load up a beam saber. Um, which, you know, beam sabers are included, so if you'd like to try to do a replicated blast like that with a larger beam saber, or you could try to use this to have a beam fire. It doesn't work too well, um, but it is the option there. And he actually is articulated. His mouth does close and open, um, so you can get some cool little poses there with that. He also does have a uh, forward and back leg swivel. These do pivot. His elbow area pivots his ball jointed foot, uh, which is the same for all those, plus his tail can be moved, and the cannons can be propelled forward if you'd like for a, you know, assault tiger. So you got that going on. Um, or an assault liger, I apologize. Anyways, that's pretty much all there is to Riku Tryon. He does have one other feature, though. He does have a port on his belly, so he can connect his Gundam stands or GP bases, whatever you'd like. Um, it does look a little silly, though, like a flying Liger, unless you, you know, pose him right, but still, it's kind of weird, honestly. The connection is there if you want it, but, you know, it's just to kind of replicate it launching into the show, I think, but not much beyond that. Here is Umi Tryon, which is Try M2. Now, this is the second component to Try On 3. It does make up the torso and arms of the Gundam. And, as you can see, he is based on a Manta Ray, or a Stingray, um, a Ray, basically. And 
it does pull off the look quite well. I mean, you do have the tail here, you do have uh, fins, but it does very much look like arms and a torso with a ray face, which is the only stickers on this component. You can see is the uh, the two eyes there. Overall, it does look good. Uh, it doesn't really do anything else, though. It's just kind of there. Um, as you may notice, Riku Trion's kind of the most interesting of the three components. Also had the most interesting character of the three components, but that's besides the point. That's pretty much all there is to Umi Trion, though, except for one more function, and that is connecting to a GP base or Gundam action base with the peg on its stomach. Honestly, it works better for this, as he can be flying or, you know, swimming through the sea kind of thing. It works better here and with Sora Trion than it did for Riku Trion. Speaking of Sora Trion, so this is Sora Trion attempting to stand. So here is Sora Trion. Now, Sora Trion really needs the stand. Um, I have not been able to get this guy to really balance well. You can kind of balance him on the two thrusters at the bottom. It doesn't work too well, though, unfortunately. It's very hard to get Sora Trion to stand without some kind of base or, you know, action stage. So, I'll just be using my GP base for this. Now, as you can see, Sora Trion is a bird, and he does have these nice wings, which is a clever reuse of parts from uh, Star Build Strike from the original Gundam Build Fighters. So, that's pretty neat. I don't mind reused parts when they're used cleverly like that. Um, also, you can see that it is a bird. Now, there are a couple stickers I did exclude, and that is the yellow area on either side here. Those are the most frustrating stickers, and I recently got in yellow Gundam marker, so I think I'll just be painting that in later, um, which is why I didn't apply the sticker. But other than that, you can see it does look very nice. It's got these talons, uh, which are articulated. You can move these here, and here, and here. Uh, you can also adjust the thruster slightly, and the wings do have uh, ball joint connections here, which works pretty well. Overall, that's Sora Trion. Doesn't really do a whole lot more, but you will need to connect it in the back here. It's just kind of interesting, as that's also the stand connector for Trion 3. So there you go, that's Sora Trion. Now that we've taken a look at all the components, let's try on! So this is Gundam Tryon 3 in all of its glory, and man is it cool! This is an expensive kit, um, more expensive than the standard high grade. He is around the $30 range instead of the $15 range at Japanese retail. And that does make him more expensive, um, but you do get quite a large figure. As you can see next to the Build Burning Gundam, who is about an average size. Gundam or Gunpla. Um, he has about average size. And you can see that Trion 3 is quite much larger. So in addition to the combining functionality, he does have a lot of bulk to him. Of course, that also comes from him being based on the double Zeta. Now, a couple complaints I do have is he is a little back heavy. Not too bad. As you can see, he does balance himself out um, quite well. But yeah, his backpack is a little heavy because it is just a lion a Liger just slapped to his back. Um, so there's that. But other than that, he just looks quite good. Um, especially when you come down to like chest design. I noticed that even with this removed, you have a very sleek chest design in here. Um, then the only thing that makes it bulky is, you know, the Liger head. But other than that, he does have articulation as a ball-jointed uh, polycap neck. 
He's got articulated shoulders that move out. He's got a bicep swivel here. He's got a double joint here. Um, it does do that gorilla arm kind of thing that a lot of uh, Transformers do. Um, but you can see you do have a ball joint wrist as well. And you can see that everything works here. These are also articulated so they can rotate, they can move. Um, I do like to leave them out splayed on his arms because it looks really cool. A polycap joint on the waist. Uh, very limited hip movement. Uh, this is, again, double zeta, so you get forward, back, and it doesn't move out too far, um, which I think could have been re-engineered a little bit better, but it does help with the stability that it isn't, doesn't go too far. This also rotates here, um, plus a double-jointed knee, and a really good range in the foot. So you can get him some really cool poses without any weapons, um, especially when you like have him where he's doing the dramatic I'm a super robot pose which is like my favorite pose to put him in because I love super robots and he's like a super robot Gundam which is pretty much the coolest thing ever now when it comes to weapons on this guy he does come with a few um, first of all he does come with the standard beam sabers um, which we can demonstrate here so here is the beam sabers for Trion 3 which are essentially the beam sabers for Double Zeta from what I can tell as you can see, they are quite long beam sabers. Uh, this does use the SB-1 style beam saber. And it does really look awkward the way he holds it. Um, all of his weapons are like this because they're a larger grip with the more circular things going on. It does just peg into his hands, and so he holds them like that, which is a little weird. Honestly, I don't pose him with the beam sabers much. He didn't use those in the show. Um, as far as I can remember, he did not use the beam sabers. Instead, he used his other quite larger weapon. This is the Hyper Minofsky Chohokin. This is about as super robot as it comes, as he has a giant weapon that is nearly impossible for him to wield in a practical sense, and is also gigantic and just kills things in a giant G shape. The Chohokin is quite awesome. It uses the tail of Umitrion, the head of Sorotrion, the two beam saber handles, and some extra beam effects in the form of a blade and extra wing pieces. It looks very, very impressive. And as you can see, it's very hard to fit it in your frame because it's gigantic. Because there's like a human hand next to this thing. It's massive. It's absolutely incredibly awesome. But it is gigantic, and it can be tricky to pull off poses with it, as it is big and heavy, and really, really, really big. Like, it's about twice the height of Tryon himself, and it's just his sword. Now, as you can see, Tryon can wield the Chohokun very much how he did in the show, which was large swings, doing letting gravity do most of the work. Honestly, it looks really cool, and with enough, you know, movement of the joints, and if you wanted to, like, add a stand to do even more dramatic poses, it is possible to get very, very good range out of the Chohokin. Now, the Chohokin is the last official weapon of Tryon 3, but there are a couple little side things. Naturally, you can move the cannons up over his head, and you can move the talons down if you want him to grab things with his leg little weird pulling out poses like that, especially with restricted hip articulation, but it is an option you do have. Now, while the V-Fin for Tryon 3 is its own separate piece, neither of Tryon's handsets are really equipped to hold or attempt to throw it. So, unfortunately, that option is out the window with the basic Tryon set, but, you know, there's alternate handsets out there. If you wanted to customize it to make it, you know, do that, you probably could. But that is all there is to Tryon 3. Overall, Tryon 3 is a fantastic high-grade kit. It's definitely the most complex high-grade I've built since the Psycho Gundam, I think. And it was really fun to build. There was a lot of neat intricacies that I wasn't expecting in the build. And overall, the kit does a whole lot and definitely worth the price. Plus, you even get like extra parts for the Double Zeta, enough to build the Double Zeta's core fighter which is in the instructions, which is weird, but it's there. It's an option. And you do get a lot of extra parts of this kit as well, so it is pretty nice in a value sense. And overall, 
It's a good kit to pick up, but if you are more traditional mobile suit designs, you're not so keen on its super robotness. I totally understand, and I understand why there are people that don't want to get this and want nothing to do with Tryon 3, because it is very different from your standard mobile suit. That's why I'm glad Build Fighters exists. It gave us some different stuff that we wouldn't get in the normal Gundam series. Plus, at this scale, it fits right along with Super Robot Shigokin King of Braids Gao Gagar. Who they save. Wow, there's a lot of similarities between these two when you put them side by side. But, overall, gotta say, Tryon 3 was one of the reasons I ended up watching Gundam Build Fighters try. You know, Super Robot. And, I'm really glad it did. And overall, definitely happy with this high grade kit. It did take a while to come out. You know, we saw him way before we saw the kit come out. And he's one of the last of the regular character kits to come out. I think actually the last of the regular character kits to come out. And I'm glad he did finally get released. Plus, there's like several repaints of him, including a cool black and gold one that I might try to get. But overall, high grade Build Fighters 38 Try on 3 is awesome. Anyways, that is all for this week on Model Kit Monday. Stay tuned for next week where we return to the Universal Century once again to take a look at the revived version of the RX-78-2 Gundam. And until then, be sure to stay tuned to my other shows, which includes Sandout's Toy Chest, the Mystery Review Show on Thursdays, and the regular Sandout Review on Saturdays. Also be sure to check out Hirotaku.com for all of your Gundam news and more. Until next time, this is Sandout saying goodbye. <laughs>